Today we're taking an in-depth look at all the newly redesigned applications and user interface elements in iOS 7. Starting with the lock screen, Johnny Ive's influence on iOS's look is very clear. Gone are any of the signs of the status bar, unlock slider, and camera slider, replaced with plain text and white glyphs. From the lock screen, swiping in many different areas will reveal different aspects of a system. If you swipe up from the bottom, it'll reveal the control center, which is a list of quick toggles and commonly used functions you might want to quickly access, such as your media controls, a flashlight, your brightness settings, and some system settings. Sliding down from the top gives you access to notification center on the lock screen, which has also been redesigned. Gone are the widgets and ability to share to Facebook and Twitter, and those are replaced with three buttons that let you view notifications in different ways. Tucked down in the corner on the lock screen is the camera slider button, which works pretty much the same as before. Assuming you don't have any notifications, you can now slide to unlock anywhere on the lock screen, no longer confined to the slider area. Moving on to the home screen, you'll see that new animations are everywhere in iOS 7. The way the icons move, how they interact with each other when closing apps, and even the background, which now shifts direction based on how you move your phone, have been changed. Spotlight has also been moved away from a separate home screen, now being accessed by swiping down on your home screen icons. Jumping into messages, you get a good taste at the basic feel of iOS 7. The biggest thing to note here is a lack of any visual representation of buttons and other user interface elements. As you can see, everything appears to be just there, with no really solid place for itself. Using messages also provides a look at some of the new animations in iOS 7 such as the transparency of the keyboard, as well as how individual messages react to physics when moved. While we're on the subject of messages, notifications also have a new black style in iOS 7. The notification boxes are also larger and I think more intrusive than before, covering up more of your screen. Thankfully, swiping up on a notification makes it disappear. Calendar is a new red and white color scheme with new ways to navigate. By tapping on a specific day, you can view it if you have anything on your calendar. Pressing back will show you the whole month, and pressing back once more will zoom you out further to show the list of the months that you can scroll through. Photos also takes design cues from Calendar in the new Collections view, showing you tiny thumbnails for your photos which gradually expand as you navigate in a more specific subset of time. Other than that, Photos retains much of the same functionality as previously found in the app, just skinned differently. I went more in depth with the camera in a separate video, but to give a quick rundown, the UI is now centered around swiping between different photo and video modes with the new shutter animation for taking pictures. You can now also zoom while you're shooting video. The video's app remains largely unchanged, just adding a white user interface. Movies now also show suggested movies from iTunes based on the selected film. The clock application received minor functional tweaks mostly receiving a skin like the rest of the OS. One thing to note, however, is that if you tap on one of the analog clocks, it'll toggle back and forth between a digital and an analog view. Maps displays largely the same data as before, wrapped in a new blurred transparent skin. Interestingly enough, the graphics themselves displayed on the maps remain unchanged and appear just as they did in iOS 6. Weather has received probably the largest functional update, bringing in an entirely new way to view your weather. Animations now play that show the type of weather in the selected area, and pinching out on the screen stacks up your cities like passes and passbook. Notes retain some amount of texture, unlike many of the other apps. The background looks like a sheet of textured paper, and the text gives it a yellow accent. The functionality is pretty much unchanged. Reminders has been completely rethought, and now behaves more like passbook, with sliding panels for your different lists. Calculator, I'd say, might be the flattest of all iOS 7 applications. It does have one nice touch, however. The key press animation is pretty neat and gives the app a sense of depth. Stocks, aside from being almost completely black, is almost identical to its iOS 6 counterpart. Moving into the phone app, the most obvious change here is how Apple decided to use round buttons on the dialer instead of square ones. The rest of the app is no different aside from a white color scheme. The iTunes and App Store share a lot in common. They both feature similar user interfaces but the content within them remains almost completely unchanged from iOS 6. It's unclear whether it will be left this way or if Apple will push a full store redesign when the OS gets released. Settings falls in the footsteps of the other applications closely, 
and more prominently features the new toggles that Apple has introduced in iOS 7, which now have green accents instead of blue. Safari has gotten much more minimalistic, with the new major changes being iCloud Keychain and a new Tabs view which resembles a stack of 3D cards. The whole interface has gotten much more sparse and now focuses on the content. Mail, like the majority of other apps, has little new to offer except the new UI, which is consistently white. Music's biggest new feature is the inclusion of iTunes Radio, which I went over in-depth in a separate video. Aside from being able to create your own stations, music's now playing screen is a polar opposite of iOS 6's black scheme. Compass has been updated for the first time ever, now sporting a very digital look. A digital level has also been added, which turns green when you're level. Passbook's update is nothing spectacular, but now allows you to scan barcodes from right within the app, which is a handy addition. Newsstand follows the same trend, with few functional tweaks, but a white interface. The app also no longer operates within a folder, instead looking just like a normal app. But Game Center received probably the strangest update, going away from the casino look in favor of abstract, floating, colored bubbles that slowly move around on your screen. It's a pretty strange app. Last but not least, multitasking has been rethought, and applications now show you a preview of their content. In classic webOS style, you can also flick apps away to kill them. Overall, this is what you can expect the shipping version of iOS 7 to look like. Although there will likely be some slight visual and functional tweaks, it's safe to assume that Apple won't massively overhaul anything between now and iOS 7's release. Thank <music> you.